Um, three days you've been here and you're cutting me off already. <laughs> At least it took Jared three years. <laughs> the day began, as I was saying, the day began with Simon Goodwin <laughs> fronting the media and he was asked about Clayton Oliver. He told reporters he simply needs to get through training and then he should be right to face the Saints on Saturday night. I can be as honest as I can be, he's got one session to get through in terms of ticking off a market today. So she's a, she's a fingers crossed moment um, and we're really hopeful that he gets through this today and um, he'll be available and he'll put uh, the Melbourne jumper on on, on Saturday night. So um, he's got one really important session to get through today and we're really hopeful that he's put in an enormous block of work in terms of his ability to get his running right up to the level as well. So, um, you know, this is the final thing he's got to tick off today. Well, Simon Goodwin, he had his fingers crossed, but unfortunately it didn't go as planned because this is the vision that has been circulating online and on all the major media outlets this evening. So basically, in a nutshell, Clayton's gone onto the track, walked around a bit, not done too much, and then cameras catched this exchange with high performance manager Selwyn Griffith. Now, you can imagine the competitive beast in Clayton Oliver clearly isn't liking what he's hearing because he wants to train with the group and he wants to be available for selection. Bear in mind, he's barely missed any football before this year, so it's unfamiliar territory for him. He's telling him off. Selwyn's told him to do a few run-throughs. I don't know what he's his... told him, but he's, not, he's telling him off and Clayton Oliver is not liking it. This is the problem of press conferences, one more time. Simon Goodwood does a press conference before training. Can we do one after training? So we can say to Simon, Simon, what happened? So this, this, this story of Clayton Oliver not playing for what, six weeks, this has been an amazing story. So it, part it of really that conversation is, is Selwyn's, Selwyn's obviously told him to do these run-throughs. He does. And unfortunately, something flares up. The hammy flares up. How do you know? Has, he then, that he being then, funny, how do you know a hammy flares up? Because he... Is he limping? Isn't charge. I've watched the whole vision. So yeah. he does grab at it. He does a few stretches. And does then, he grab at it? And then he leaves the track. So he's missed five games, likely to be six now, because you can't see him lining up on Saturday night against the Saints. You can't see him lining up seven or eight either. That's a, that, that's a fascinating... But it does happen at footy clubs? Exactly. And I think we need to stress that point of, of, you know, I was even just speaking to Joey Montagna and you're always filthy when you can't play. You want to play. This is what you train for. And unfortunately, as I also said, didn't that Clayton's rarely missed any footy throughout his AFL career. He's been very lucky in that regard. So he's, he's not used to this and he's not liking it and it's understandable. Mm. So I think... Um, but he's not getting told a... you didn't do your stretches. He's not getting told you didn't do an ice bath. He's getting told something really personal. For Clayton Oliver to react like that to the high performance manager, he's being told something really personal for him to get really angry about. He's angry. He's not just a little miffed. He's really, really angry. So it's a fascinating. Hopefully we'll, fi we'll find out about it. Goody will get asked after the game on Saturday whether he um, tells us what happened or not. Um, we wait to see, but... Um, yeah, you just... Fingers crossed it's not another three weeks or so. But, um, for Melbourne's Because sake. it will be six games now when he misses Saturday night. Unbelievable. Uh, let's move on to a bit of contract news. So Saints fans will be happy today. They play the Demons, as I mentioned, on Saturday night. They've announced three massive re-signings today. So Jack Sinclair, Jack Higgins and Cal Wilkie all signing on long-term. So it's good to have those three locked in, hey? Higgins is an enormous story. Brain, brain surgery... You never thought he was going to play footy again. He said today, for another four years, I think he got. He's amazing. Cal Wilkie's been a terrific pickup yep. from when I got to the club, and Jack Sinclair's their, their best player. And he would have got a sizable new contract, Jack Sinclair. I mean, he, he's all Australian. He was all Australian last year. So he, he's looking at, I mean, I'm not I'm going to guess, but he's in the top payment section of the, of the Saints. You know, he'd be 800 plus or round about. And then the other one is over in the West, so Fremantle have locked Dry Amos in. Oh, so until the end of 2029. And you can understand why the early signs of what he's going to be able to produce when he gets a bit of size on him too. But he's a, he's a great player to have right now, but his future looks very bright, doesn't it? 2029, so, he's going to play for the Dockers for a long, long time, isn't he? Yep, he'll be in purple. And then you're happy. For a long time. You're very happy. The game of the round is Friday night, no doubt. It is the Western Bulldogs and Collingwood under the lid at Marble Stadium. The latter leaders will be somewhat vulnerable. They do have Jordan Dugowie returning, which is great news, but unfortunately, as Craig McRae revealed, they'll be without two of their important stars.
Braden won't play this week. Um, it's just a bit of a combination of a couple of weeks of too much soreness. He's, um, funnily enough, he's had the shoulder, which he's probably had for a couple of years, but um, a little knock on his knee that's going to hold him out this week. Brody's post-game had a little of a tight hamstring. We thought it might have been a strain. Um, upon scans, it, it doesn't represent that way, so um, he's just really stiff and sore. So um, another battering ram we've got. So unfortunately, he's not available as well. Evens it up the game, doesn't it? It does somewhat. This is a massive opportunity for the Western Bulldogs, isn't it? With all the news around Melbourne and how they've left the door open somewhat now for that fourth position. The dogs put it on the agenda last week. I meet Baines, the CEO. They got a, they reckon they've got a top four list and they're aiming for a top four finish. So they've, they've heightened expectations and, and, um, and, and lifted expectations at the football club, which is good. So the dogs go... So to go it back, enormous help. Enormous. Yep. He's a gun. But Maynard, Maynard's the kind of player when a going gets tough, he, 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 he stiffens them up. He does a lot of massive one percenters in, in the way he plays. A lot of the pies do, I know that. But he's a real general down at the back. And Brody Majek is the, he, he's the, um, you know, he's a bit of a dumb kick. He's the one who competes all the time in the air. I'm not saying that the others don't. But Majek's the one who runs himself into the ground to present himself for his teammates. Have they got a replacement for that? They'll say, yeah, we'll play someone. No, they haven't. Because they haven't got the fortitude of Majek. That's why we all love Brody Majek for the way he plays. 